What is up? Welcome to the episode. Today we are chatting about meal timing for fat loss because a client of mine recently asked me a great question on the topic and so I figured, hey, why not cover it on the pod being that I'm sure that a bunch of other folks are curious about it too. The question was, Marcus, what are your thoughts on meal timing? I know you seem to be a calories in, calories out kind of guy, which makes complete logical sense to me, but there are all these apps out there trying to promote fasting hours, saying that if you eat all your calories within a certain window of time, that that will help you lose weight. Is that true? Or is it true to at least not eat too close to bedtime in order to promote fat loss? Okay, so there are a few questions layered in here, and we're going to address them all one by one. The first aspect of this question that I want to touch on is the, I know you seem to be a calories in, calories out kind of guy, which makes complete logical sense to me. I equate this part to someone saying, I know you seem to be a round earth kind of guy, which makes complete logical sense to me. Now, Some folks still believe to this day that the earth is flat. Similarly, some folks still believe that calories in, calories out, isn't a fundamental law of thermodynamics, i.e. energy cannot be created or destroyed. So, yes, I am a quote-unquote calories in, calories out kind of guy, just like I am a round earth kind of guy. Now, this does not mean that the quality of the calories that you eat doesn't matter, because it does. However, fat loss still does come down to calories in, calories out at the end of the day, no matter how you spin it, even when we account for food quality. Just like Whether you are saving money, breaking even, or going into the red comes down to how much money is coming into your account and how much money is going out. It makes complete logical sense, as my client mentioned, because it makes complete logical sense. She is spot on. The second part of the question is, but there are all these apps out there trying to promote fasting hours saying that if you eat all your calories within a certain window of time, that that will help you lose weight. Is that true? The simplest way to think about this is via the following. Let's say that there are three identical versions of you with the exact same level of activity and all eating 1,500 calories per day from the exact same foods. Version 1 eats six meals of 250 calories each. Version two eats three meals of 500 calories each. And version three eats one meal of 1,500 calories total. So all three versions are moving the exact same amount every day, and they're all eating 1,500 calories in total from the exact same foods. The only difference is how the calories are dispersed, i.e. six meals, three meals, or one meal. Who loses the most fat? They all lose the exact same amount because it's just like saying there are three versions of you that spend $1,500 daily. Version one spends $250 six times. Version two spends $500 three times, and version three spends $1,500 all at once. Who spends the most money? They all spend the exact same amount. $1,500 is $1,500 no matter how you split it up. Point being, it doesn't matter how many times you eat per day for fat loss. What matters is how many total calories you consume. That is the bottom line. Now, 
If someone finds that having certain hours of the day where they eat and other hours where they don't eat helps them reduce their total calorie intake from a lifestyle and adherence perspective, they will lose fat. But not because eating during specific hours has some sort of special fat burning effect, because it doesn't. The thing is, That when most people reduce the amount of hours that they're eating per day, they spontaneously reduce their total calorie intake. And so they mistake correlation for causation, being that the reason that they lost fat was because they ate fewer total calories, not because they had those calories between, say, 8 a.m. and noon, or noon and 4 p.m., or 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Taking this to the extreme, if you only eat one meal per day, so you fast for 23 out of 24 hours, but you still overeat calories in that single meal or hour, you will still gain body fat. The body does not care whether those calories were evenly spread throughout the day or eaten all at once. Overeating is overeating. Okay, moving on to the last part of our question. Is it true to at least not eat close to bedtime in order to promote fat loss? I am a fan of not eating too close to bedtime for sleep quality purposes, being that eating too much and or too close to bed very often reduces sleep quality via things like the night sweats or hot flashes, as some folks refer to them. However, again, what matters for fat loss is total calories consumed and not what time of day that you eat them. And so in our previous example, like we mentioned, you could technically eat all 1500 calories in one meal and go directly to bed and you'll still lose the same amount of fat that the six meals per day version of you and the three meals per day version of you does. Now, why is it that folks often find that when they stop eating close to bedtime, they lose some body fat? Because this behavior tends to reduce total calorie intake. Also, what types of foods do folks tend to eat later at night while they're watching TV, let's say? Typically, it's super calorie dense snack foods and desserts. And so if someone stops doing that because they have a rule that they don't eat after 6 p.m., let's say, chances are their calorie intake is going to go down. This is another classic example of mistaking correlation for causation. It's like thinking that firefighters cause fires because when you see a fire, you also see firefighters. Similarly, If you were to stop drinking alcohol after 6 p.m., your alcohol intake would almost certainly decrease because most folks drink the majority of their booze after 6 p.m. If you want to lose fat, it's all about creating a calorie deficit and whatever sort of eating pattern that makes that as doable as possible for you as an individual is a great way to go. Whether that's having 10 meals a day, one meal a day, intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating, or whatever. These are all just strategies to create a calorie deficit. Now, food quality still matters a ton for health purposes, but also because high-quality foods, i.e. single-ingredient whole foods, are infinitely more filling than hyper-palatable, highly processed foods. And so if you have, say, 1,500 calories to work with per day, I would recommend getting the vast majority of those calories from single-ingredient whole foods because you will feel full. On the other hand, if you have that same 1,500 calories to work with per day, but you eat them from highly processed foods, you're going to be hungry. And if you feel hungry, 
good luck sticking to your calorie deficit because hunger is not sustainable. When your nutrition strategy is set up properly for fat loss, you should not feel hungry. You should feel super satiated. Now, how do I structure meal timing for my clients? However they want. Most of my clientele tend to prefer to eat two to three meals per day with one to two snacks. But there is no right or wrong answer in terms of what time you eat or how many times you eat. So feel free to play around with this based on your priorities, preferences, schedule, lifestyle, etc. Because as long as you're in a calorie deficit, you will lose fat. And if you are not losing fat, you are not in a calorie deficit. Plain and simple. Now, like I mentioned before, I really want to drive this point home. I still strongly recommend that you get the vast majority of your calories from single ingredient whole foods for health and satiation purposes. Quantity and quality matter for sustainable and healthy fat loss. If you're interested in applying for one-on-one nutritional coaching and or workout design with me, you can click the link in the description below or head on over to n1fitness.com forward slash coaching. If you're finding this info helpful and you'd like to, feel free to leave the pod a review on your favorite podcast platform. And you can follow me on Instagram at n1fitness, on TikTok at the N1 Fitness and on YouTube at Marcus Adu slash N1 Fitness. If you'd like to stay up to date on the newest episode releases, you can hit the subscribe button. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that you found this episode useful and I will catch you on the next one. See ya.